Why do hearing impaired people suffer more from bad room acoustics? The thing is, if you got a proper working hearing, you will hear most frequencies pretty much equal. But when you get a hearing injury or illness or damage or something like that, it might be that the high frequency hearing takes more damage than the low frequencies. It's also the same thing with age. As The, the older you get, the more you will lose your high frequency hearing. And it's, it's, in practice, what this means is that the sound you hear is going to sound more and more and more like this. You see, the high frequency content goes away. Whereas here you have the high frequency content. But you can hear that when I do like this, it's much harder to understand what I'm saying. Because the consonants go away. They are high frequency. Whereas the vowels are lower frequency and they stay there. So if we take a look at a room, what this could look like. It's if you have the so-called reverberation time, R t which is measured in seconds it's basically a measure of how many seconds does a sound stay inside a room before it dies out i mean if you do like this it's uh it's like an impulse but it takes like bah! it takes a little while before it dies out and different frequencies will die out quicker than others and typically what you will get in most rooms is a shape like this if you have frequency on this axis. So you've got low frequencies here and high frequencies there. So the lower frequencies have a longer wavelength and they are thus more difficult to absorb. So they, they will lose less energy every time they bounce against the surface. So they will stay inside the room for a longer time and then the higher you go in frequency usually the reverberation time gets shorter because a high frequency has a short wavelength which means it's gonna lose a lot more energy every time it hits the surface and is reflected. So it's, it's only going to survive a limited number of reflections. And that number that it can survive is usually lower for the higher frequencies. So this is a typical room if you have hard surfaces on all, ev everywhere. Now if you, if you don't, then would have a room with proper good acoustics, you would ideally want it to, so to be something more like this, so that you have a rather flat frequency response, so that every, every frequency stays about the same length of time inside the room. They, it's, it's not like that, that the long frequencies stay for a, the, the, the low frequencies stay for a long time and the high frequencies die out quickly. You would ideally want them to stay pretty much the same. But in a, in a bad room it's going to look like the black curve here. Now, if we then superimpose this with a combination of normal hearing and compare it to some somebody that is hearing impaired. Now, if you're normal, with normal hearing, you hear all the frequencies pretty much the same, but if you're hearing impaired or if you're getting old, you will lose the high frequency content and that's gonna become like a leverage. So you will lose this part of the curve, you hear just as not like before, but this part of the curve is gonna that's what goes, this part goes down when you lose your hearing. And that means you, you amp, it's, it's going to be perceived like you amplify the sounds that you don't want to hear more of, and you take away those that you really want to hear more of. So, so a room that can be perceived as, yeah, this is a pretty decent room if you have normal hearing, can be perceived as an absolute disaster if someone is hearing impaired. So it's, uh, it's easy to forget this little fact. But uh, if you're working with rooms where you can expect people with hearing loss to be inside these rooms, you need to take extra care to the acoustics. And this also goes for people with visual uh, impairment. If, if you are blind, for instance, you will... If you're blind, you will use your ears to look at the room. You use them to orient yourself. So if you have uh, sight loss, it's also very important with room acoustics. Yeah. And in today's video, um, actually, I've <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't wear any fancy schmancy. I just go with my trusty old turtleneck. This one is a great choice for with a merino wool 
for the Swedish spring climate. It's not too warm and it's not too cold. So, see you guys later.